Hello everyone, welcome to another unboxing video. This time I'm going to do unboxing and mounting of Intel Core i9 CPU and HyperX Predator high performance memory and Western Digital Black M2 SSD gaming storage. Let me cut off the sealing tape on Western Digital M2 SSD storage and I can mention why I have chosen this storage. It is currently one of the fastest storage on the market supporting PCI Express Gen 4 with sequential read performance up to 7000 MB per second and sequential write performance up to 5100 MB per second and it is capable of 1 million input output operations per second. The model name is SN850 NVMe SSD with capacity 2 TB. Inside the plastic cover we have the M2 SSD disk without the heatsink and you can use it for PC build with motherboard which has the heatsink for M2 SSD disk already mounted on it. There is also a version with heatsink included and mounted to SSD itself and that one would be possible to use in PlayStation 5 to load the games much faster. So we had a documentation and M2 SSD disk with 2280 size included within the box of SN850 SSD storage with capacity of 2TB. Now let's discover what do we have in the box of HyperX Predator DDR4 RGB memory modules and the reason why I've been going with DDR4 instead of DDR5 is the price and speed I'm getting for it as well as the compatibility of my motherboard. And you can check the unboxing of that one in the video in top right corner. I have already DR5 memory modules for my next build and if you are interested to see video about that one make sure you hit the subscribe button. So these are the two DDR4 memory modules each with size of 16GB with frequencies 3600MHz and with CL17 timing. Each module kit supports Intel X3 memory profiles, Intel XMP20, which means you can select in BIOS the predefined frequency with cycles and voltage needed to support the frequency. And you can check the predefined frequencies of these modules in top left corner. On both of these you can notice RGB on top and heatsink on both sides of the memory module called heat spreader. Now let's continue with our unboxing experience and we can do unboxing of Intel Core i9 11th gen and again the reason for choosing this one is the compatibility with the motherboard I have but if you have budget for 12th gen Core i9 or new 13th gen Core i9 then definitely go with that one. And I will be doing unboxing of 13 Gen Core i9 including the performance test whenever it is available so make sure you hit the subscribe button to do not miss the video about that one. But for now let me find out how to crack this plastic box which is hiding the Core i9 CPU. And inside the box we can see the brochure with small window highlighting the Intel Core i9 CPU. So let me pull it out and we can explore what else do we have inside. I will just unwrap the sealing tape and inside we have smaller plastic cover around the Intel Core i9 CPU. This is well protecting the CPU from any electrostatic discharge and together with the plastic box with the Intel Core i9 CPU we also have a documentation. Inside the documentation we have processor installation instructions as well as warranty information in multiple languages. Let's quickly check the CPU over the transparent plastic cover and it is labeled with i9-11900K model name with base frequency 3.5 GHz but it has max turbo frequency 5.3 GHz. And now is the time to start mounting the components into my Gigabyte Aorus motherboard and very first one I will loosen the screw on the M2 SSD disk heatsink. This motherboard has PCI Express Gen 4 feature so we will be able to utilize the speed of Western Digital M2 SSD with model name SN850 and with PCI Express Gen 4 compatibility. This M2 PCI Express slot supports NVMe SSD disk with width 22mm and length either 60, 80 or 110mm. So Western Digital SN850 with length 80mm will fit in without any standoffs adjustments. I have just inserted Western Digital SSD into M2 connector and I'm using the screw included in the motherboard accessories package to secure it in the connector. Now one important thing is to remove the protective film from the bottom of the heatsink before mounting the heatsink on top of the Western Digital SN850 NVMe disk. The SN850 is high performance disk which means it will be heating a little bit when put under pressure.
and it has operating temperature up to 70 degrees Celsius which is 158 Fahrenheit so proper cooling via heatsink is necessary. Now when we have mounted Western Digital SN 850 NVMe disk, let's move to mounting the memory modules into Gigabyte Aorus motherboard. For that we need to check the documentation to see which sockets are best for two modules in dual channel mode. In our case it is recommended to use A2 and B2 sockets in each out of two channels. Let me take out the first memory module out of the plastic box and let's not forget to release the locks on both sides of the memory slot. That will enable us to slide in the memory module and by applying just a little bit of the force we'll hear the click sound which means the memory module is locked into the slot. So that was the click sound. Now let's do exactly the same thing with the second module and let's place it into B2 memory slot as described in the manual of the motherboard. Again I have released the locks on both sides of the memory module slot and now let me just slide it in by applying just a little bit of the force. Now when we have the HyperX RGB memory modules installed, let's prepare the LGA1200 CPU socket for the installation of our Intel Core i9 CPU. I have released the lever with CPU retention mounting bracket and I have released the plastic CPU socket cover even though it should pop off automatically when tightening the lever with CPU inserted. Now let's locate the pin 1 of the CPU and even though CPU cannot be inserted if oriented incorrectly because of the alignment keys on the motherboard CPU socket and the notches on the CPU, we still want to place the CPU into the CPU socket on first attempt to avoid any pins damages. Let's be patient and let's focus while placing the CPU into the CPU socket. After placing the CPU, let's lower the metal load plate which is our CPU retention bracket and let's ensure that the notch at the end of the bracket slips around the single screw at the base of the socket. And by slowly lowering the metal lever, we'll lock the CPU into place. And now is the time to install the CPU liquid cooler pump. I am installing NZXT Kraken Z63 and you can check unboxing and mounting video of that one by opening the link in top right corner. Let me remove the plastic cover and underneath we can see the new NZXT Kraken Z63 liquid cooler has already applied the thermal paste on it. And if you are reusing any other CPU cooler make sure you apply the thermal paste first before the placing the CPU cooler on top of the CPU. And by placing the NZXT Kraken Z63 on top of the CPU, I am going to align all four holes in pump's retention bracket onto the CPU socket standoffs installed on the motherboard. Let's ensure the standoffs go through the holes of the bracket and then I can just start mounting the thumb nuts which were included in the package of NZXT Kraken Z63. While mounting all four thumb nuts onto the standoffs, let's make sure that all of them are properly tightened up, but at the same time let's make sure that you are not forcing it too much to do not spread the thermal paste unevenly. And now let's start connecting the cables from NZXT Kraken Z63. The very important one is the one which must be connected to the CPU fan slot on the motherboard. Then we have a micro USB cable which also needs to be connected to the Kraken Z63 and there are more cables which I have already connected as part of the motherboard unboxing so make sure you check my channel for more videos on that one. And after all cables are connected we can plug in the power cable into our Seasonic Focus power supply unit and then we can connect the HDMI cable to motherboard's HDMI connector as this Core i9-11900K has integrated GPU so it will help us to troubleshoot any issues before I'll install RTX 3060 or perhaps RTX 4080 into the PCI Express slot. And that would be it from this build. If you are interested to see performance results, make sure you leave me a comment and perhaps hit the subscribe button to do not miss my next video with Core i9-12900K or Core i9-13900K or if you have found any part of this video useful such as how to mount the Kraken Z63 onto the CPU, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and until my next video, cheers!